I'm Eva Lewandowski. I'm the citizen-based monitoring coordinator at the Wisconsin DNR, and I'm here with Karen Oberhauser and Susan Carpenter at the UW-Madison Arboretum. We're here to talk about Pollinator Week and the importance of pollinators. So in Wisconsin, pollinators play a really important role in both our native ecosystems and our agricultural systems because they transport pollen from one flower to another and that allows our native ecosystems to flourish and grow and it allow, allows crops to produce fruits as well. And we have pollinators that are bees, butterflies, flies, moths, beetles, hummingbirds, did I miss anything? Wow. Bats. Bats wow. are not Bats are not pollinators in Wisconsin, actually. But in some places they yeah, are. Yeah, so that's an important point, that in Wisconsin all of our bats eat insects, which is also a really important benefit, of course, but not pollinators. And you said wasps yep. are pollinators as well. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So most of our pollinators are insects. And some of the work that the DNR does in order to help our pollinators includes planting habitat on state uh, state lands, including state natural areas and state parks. We also maintain habitat by planting natives and pulling invasives. And we coordinate a lot of citizen-based monitoring opportunities, which is when members of the public can partner with us to collect information. We have pollinator projects involving monarchs, or carnar blue butterflies, bumblebees. So there's a lot of opportunities for partners. And we also provide information to the public so that they can help with creating habitat in their own time. But we can't do everything, so we work a lot with our partners, which is one of the reasons that we're here at the Arboretum with Susan and with Karen, because the UW-Madison Arboretum is one of our best pollinator partners. <laughs> so, Karen, you are the director of the Arboretum, but you've also been involved with Monarch work for a very, very long time. Do you want to talk a little bit about Monarchs and their importance? and how people can help. There's one going by. Yeah, there is a monarch <laughs> flying right behind us. <laughs> we did not see that. <laughs> that was really great. Um, so this illustrates, we're standing here in front of a patch of milkweed, which is very important to monarchs. Um, milkweed, there are many species of milkweed in North America and in Wisconsin, and monarchs will eat almost all of them, but this is the most common kind of milkweed, which is called, called common milkweed. So. This is a great way to help monarchs to plant this. But getting back to a little bit about monarch conservation, I've been studying monarchs for over 30 years now. During that time period, monarch numbers have declined a great deal. We're at about 10% of the number of monarchs there were in North America from when I first started studying them. And we know a lot about what's driven the decline of monarchs, and most of it is the loss of habitat. So we've, we've lost habitat in the breeding range, the migratory range, and the overwintering range in Mexico and also in California. So it's interesting when Eva was listing all of the different species, um, all of the different groups of insects and, and other species that pollinate plants. Butterflies, and I think Susan will talk about why bees are such great pollinators. We're going to talk about this, right? um, So butterflies aren't the, the best pollinators. A couple reasons for that. They don't have structures on their body that can carry pollen very efficiently. And they also tend to be um, not very specific in their choice of flowers. So they'll go from one species of flower to another, which is not really what you want if you're a flower waiting for pollen from your own species. But what's really important about butterflies and monarchs in particular is that people love them. So monarchs and other butterflies are just a great flagship species for pollinator conservation because the kinds of habitats that are best for monarchs are also good for a lot of the more efficient pollinator species. So I've, like I said, I've worked on monarchs for a long time. I work with a lot of people about what they can do to help monarchs. And if you are interested in helping monarchs, um, there are really four different things you can do. And the first one is create habitat for them. So habitat that looks like this lovely native plant garden that we have at the Arboretum. It needs to include milkweed, which is the host plant for the caterpillars, but it also needs to include a lot of other flowering plants. So you can see one right here that Eva has. A Sunflower, oxeye sunflower, oxeye sunflower, 
um, and a lot of other species behind us. So you need to have a diversity of flowers for the butterflies and bees. So creating habitat. The seth second thing you can do is get involved in monarch citizen science. Um, there are a lot of opportunities to do that and there's a lot we need to learn about the kinds of habitats that monarchs use, when they use them, and how they use them. Um, the third thing you can do is learn about monarchs and spread the word. Tell other people what they can do because this is really a grassroots effort. Um, you can have a 10 by 10 foot garden or even smaller and plant the kinds of plants that will bring monarchs to your yard and will actually help monarchs. And the third thing you can do is just support any organization that's working on habitat conservation. And this can be by volunteering, like at the Arboretum. We have lots and lots of volunteers that come and work on this habitat. And out in our restored prairies, you can work for other organizations, donate money, whatever you have the time and resources to do. So there's a lot you can do to help monarchs and other pollinators. So thanks for watching this and being involved in this. And Susan, Karen mentioned that you were going to talk a little bit about bees, but here at the Arboretum, you're known as sort of the bumblebee lady, and even you're one of the foremost bumblebee people that we have in the state. So can you tell us a little bit about bumblebees? Well, bumblebees are a terrifically important uh, pollinator, and one of the reasons is that they are large and they are very efficient at um, pollinating. They have hairs on their body that attract pollen. They actually collect pollen that they'll use to feed their young. So they are visiting a lot of flowers and they're visiting usually every, they're usually visiting the species that are in bloom at any given time, which might only be a few species on any given day. They are focused on those, on that pollen, collecting it, and so they will be transferring pollen from flower to flower, even though their goal is really to bring the pollen back to the nest to feed their young. It's a great protein source. So the bees do need nectar, and they'll use other plants for nectar, even if they're not collecting pollen from it. Um, but they, they do have a long day. They'll be out early in the morning when it's kind of cool. They'll be out late in the afternoon. On hot days, they'll be out in the evening because they'll take a break during the hottest part of the day. And they'll be collecting pollen and moving across the landscape. So a lot of the things that Karen mentioned for uh, how to help um, bumblebees <laughs> and other bees uh, are the same things. So creating habitat, creating the same kind of habitat is very important. Having a continuous bloom of species throughout the season is very important. Our native bees don't keep large storage supplies of honey in, in their colonies or, and some of, most of them are solitary bees and they don't keep any, they don't collect any, um, any honey or keep any uh, storage for food for themselves. So they need to have flowers to visit all season long. And we have about 500 species of native bees in Wisconsin, so 20 bumblebee species, mm -hmm. but all the rest of them are out and about as well. Some of them are very tiny, um, up to our biggest bumblebees. Monarch is very <laughs> interested okay. in being in the Facebook Live today. Come, Monarch, come. <laughs> <laughs> um, so those, uh, so creating habitat is a huge is a huge factor, and anybody can do that in their yard. Anybody can help with it at a park or natural area with kind of the efforts that Karen spoke of as well. Um, then, of course, monitoring. And this is really how I got involved with bumblebees was because of a rare bumblebee that was found here and it's now, it's the rusty patch bumblebee and that one is now and listed as an endangered species at the federal level. So it's quite an important species to be monitoring and Fish and Wildlife Service needs to know where it is and what mm -hmm. the range is and now the DNR has a special project uh, called Bumblebee Brigade. So if you are interested in monitoring bumblebees in Wisconsin, you join the Bumblebee Brigade. Yes. And it's a really fun project because you're doing photography. And bumblebees are one of the easiest groups to monitor of all of our native bees because from photographs taken well, you can identify the species. And then we'll know which are the most common species, which are the least common, what flowers are all the different species using. These are some of the questions that can be answered with something as simple as amassing 
many, many, many photos from all over the state. And that's the goal of the project. So there are trainings um, available. Uh, there are There is a website, Bumblebee Brigade, so you can sign up for all the notifications and maybe sign up for a training mm -hmm. still. There might be some spaces left. There's space in our lacrosse training. <laughs> Great. Yeah. And so um, I would really recommend those two things. Of course, supporting organizations that uh, that support pollinators, just like Karen said, is uh, obviously something that would support both butterflies, bees, and a lot of the other pollinators that use the same habitat. And so if you are looking for more information, you can go to the DNR website, which is dnr.wi.gov, and search for pollinators. And you'll find our native pollinator page that way. And there's lots of good information there. There's information on the citizen science projects that we've talked about. There's information on plants and where to get good native plants, because again, we want to highlight those native plants. We really want people to be planting native plants for our native pollinators. Um, information on how to donate. One of the best ways that you can donate is to the Endangered Resources Fund. And then throughout Pollinator Week, which is all this week, it's a national and a statewide week, we're going to be having Facebook posts and emails coming out from the DNR. So there's going to be a lot of information that people can take advantage of if they want to help out pollinators. Great. Okay.